What's up, everyone? It's Gavin or Tweak. What's good? What's good? It is Marcus or Pink. What up? What up? It's Charles or Chuck. What's happening, everyone? You got Matt or Has? Bring it in. When's the last time all four of us were here? It's good to see y'all, actually. It's been a minute. Are you okay, Marcus? What the heck? Yeah, bro. Sleepy? Just allergies, man. It's nice Sleepy. weather outside. It's spring, man. You're killing me. You're telling me I've watched more baseball in the last two weeks than I ever have. What's going on, everyone? How's everyone doing? What's up, Charles? Tell me about it. Showing up on time this time. I love it. Instead of ending yeah, up like yeah. the Marvel movies credit scene. That was amazing. <laughs> on time this week. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun at QuaiCon. Uh, Gavin and B came over like about a week early, like five days early before the event. So that was super fun. And yeah, just continue to do all the property management stuff I've been doing and just keeping on the grind, staying busy. Tax season is stressful, to say the least. But yeah, I mean, we're still trucking along and we had a bunch of good smash this weekend too to watch. So super excited to get into that. How are you doing, Marcus? You know, I'm so used to being the first person to get passed to that now I'm ready for it, you know? Like, it's kind of it's interesting. But okay, so I'm great. Um, outside of allergies, bro, spring is my least favorite season. I'm sorry for the spring lovers out there, but as someone with awful allergies, it's just, it's miserable. Yeah, I know I'm old and I probably should start taking my medicine in February, but I don't. I don't. So I hate it every time. Like, I just don't know why I do it to myself. So it's not spring's fault, it's my fault. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm I'm great. I'm great. Nothing has really changed much. I'm just living a life that I enjoy and I don't know, that's good enough for me. How's it going, Gavin? I'm pretty good. Uh I have a couple of tournaments I'll be going to at the end of the month or towards the end of the month. The uh, Luminosity Smash Invitational. Um Man, that's very yeah. soon. They just announced it not too long ago. I was going to so. say, can you tell us about that a little bit? Uh, what do you want to know, bro? Who's invited? Who's like? What? How's it work? Tell me about it. Like, who, can, can you leak the list? I don't know. I think, I think they're still finalizing the last couple. And also, yeah, I don't know if I can leak the I mean, you, you probably you can. can, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I could, but... Yeah, let's do it. Expect all the luminosity people plus some more. How about that? <laughs> wow. Boring. Damn, that was actually kind of smooth from Gavin. Dang, I give it. A, all right, we'll move on. Um, and then level up. Uh, uh, Is that the end of this month? Yeah, there's Luminosity Smash Invitational for me. Week off. I think. oh snap. I level up something. Oh like that. yes. And then I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Phil EE to bring my goat deck. You can finally play some. Oh, we go, goat dude. We're goat, goat decking. Yes. I got both of mine, Charles. They're coming. I'm still waiting on a couple cards, and I'm starting to think they're not coming. <laughs> oh, well. Gavin, Gavin fucked up all his orders. He was texting me one day. About how I didn't mess up. They, would, they kept sending me the wrong cards. I also have a ridiculous amount of Spell Ruler 25th edition bulk because of Gavin just buying a shit ton of... Yeah, I just left it. You got it? Bro, we're, we're adults now. The bulk, just throw it away. Just, it's garbage. Like Just get rid of it instantly. I don't care. There's one card. Dude, what if in 20 years it... Nope. Yeah. Is worth nope. fifty cents a card. No. We're not making that mistake, bro. We're st and st st which one is the mistake? The keeping or the throwing away? Throwing away. Oh, it's the keep for sure. The keep is garbage. <laughs> well, blow, I'm a responsible dude. adult, and I'm gonna recycle it because I give a fuck about the environment. It has Jesus? Let's I'm go. Gonna throw it I'll away. I'll be burning it in my backyard. What? The this shit's kidding. Well, as long as you're barbecuing, <laughs> I am. Bro. Come through. It's delicious. Spell ruler barbecue. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What the um hell? anyway how have you been doing has no one Levin cares baseball? uh so I leo's care. leo's roy amazing <laughs> oh okay sorry i just tried to change the subject i'm good bro yeah, okay baseball see you know okay all right okay halt no, no 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 okay what's up go chat before we start of course if you like the comment make sure you like comment nice, and nice, nice. subscribe make sure to support us on our patreon that's the best way you guys can support us directly it helps us out a ton and this week's Patreon content, we're going to be talking about which top players should play which characters. And I am very interested to know every single viewer's opinion on this. So please put the one top player. And if you could like pick their character that they want to play, put the player, put the top player, put the character you want them to play in the comments below. And of course, you could add us on Twitter as well and tell us the answers there. And I, I would love to go over some Twitter stuff, too. I, I would love to involve the Twitter a bit more. So if you guys do Agreed. have uh, any interactions like on Twitter, make sure to add us on Twitter. 
I, I will say, obviously, for all its downsides, Smash Twitter is also fucking hilarious sometimes. Like, Charles, when we go to tournaments, we are cracking up at some Smash Twitter. We should, so we should do better at documenting them and bringing them up on the podcast just to give people Like, Twitter chance. went hard at Genesis Weekend. It went super oh, we hard. Were, like, dude, oh we were crying, goodness. bro, at Genesis. There's so many funny tweets. It's Honestly, it's such a weird polarizing part of, of Smash culture is the Twitter. It's either the best and the like most hilarious thing or the absolute worst. Yeah, Yeah, yeah for sure. They both come in the the same basket. Have the combo, kind of, yeah. But yeah, dude, we should do that, Charles. That does sound fun. We should cover more Smash Twitter. And fun um, fact, Taz runs the Twitter. So, do you want to know the man behind the the phone? It's Taz. Yeah, true. I'm, I'm getting um, what your secret identity has. Thanks, bro. Uh, what was I gonna say? I don't you know. Said, I watch I, I watch a bunch of Smash this weekend. Yeah. I, I think that's probably the most interesting, one of the most interesting topics aside from Pikachu getting a big W. Wait, wait, wait. Weekend. Is it cool if I go over my Kawhi Con experience because I didn't do it last week? I know this is like a two No, week sorry. Week. We've already really? been gone. Really? Am I, am, am I just getting my Kawhi Con just taken away? Like, <laughs> well, there's always next year. You'll be there at 2025. True, true. Okay. Just say please, please, fill please fill us in. Please fill us in. Please never okay, say so. 2025 ever again. Why? Quaicon was super fun. I think something that uh, not a lot of people you talked can. about. It was the first time. Well, Tama P. That was the first time Tama P. Competed outside of Japan, so that was really cool. Bayo, yeah. Uh, th- that was also the first time Tweak ever played against Tama P. And Gak and uh, against Gak ever in Smash Brothers. You didn't even play him in Smash Four or anything, right, Gavin? Correct, correct. So that that's pretty crazy. So I think there was definitely some interesting sets, some interesting storylines. Uh, Gavin tried to go Sephiroth, lol. That was funny. And then and then he decided to win the tournament with Diddy. That was cool. Um, I I entered doubles, which was really fun until I played up against uh, Kazi and Steve, and then I just raged out of the venue and I didn't enter singles. So that was dope. Good uh, because I didn't enter singles, so I raged on Friday in doubles, so I wouldn't have to rage in singles. And I was telling everyone when people were like, you're dropping out of singles. I was like, I'm choosing happiness, bro. I'm choosing uh, happiness. You, did I tell you what my new plan is, Charles? Just as an what? aside, as like a caster who also enjoys, well, enjoys playing. I don't know about also enjoys playing, but I enjoy playing. Oh, I, I, think... I enjoy playing the game. It's great. Oh. Anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to enter squad strike. I think that makes a lot of sense because I have characters I like to play. It's not super serious. So like if I do poorly, like whatever. And if I do well, it's kind of a W. And I get to play both my characters, which is fun, and uh, and Ryu, so that's fun. And then uh, it's it's on a Friday, so like it won't mess up the commentary schedule. You know what I'm saying? So that's my plan going forward. I think it'll be fun. Here's the thing about competing specifically in singles or just competing in general with Ultimate. I have a lot of fun playing the game. I have a lot of fun watching the game. Being in a competitive environment, specifically against Fighter Pass Two, is not fun for me, at least. So yeah. and and like. <laughs> You literally can't blame me for that. It's just, it's, it's whack. It, the, the, the things that happen, the things that Fighter Pass 2 can do, it's just, it depends on how much time you have to play the game too. Like, am I going to sit there and lab against Steven Kazuya or like play a perfect game of running away from Kazuya the entire time, doing everything safe, never committing, like all that stuff is really difficult to do. So, I mean, I, I still love playing the game. It's just competing specifically against Fighter Pass 2 is just not fun for me. So, and obviously like that's a, big part of the meta and i don't diss anyone that it is down to compete against fighter pass 2 right so i mean that's that's my viewpoint and shout outs to bbw who was my teammate we actually got fourth and then we got eliminated by steven kazio which was very troll but yeah i mean it, overall it's still a fun i still love the game and i still like playing it but competing against fighter pass 2 specifically is extremely frustrating especially if you don't have the time to adapt the specific counterplay because if you think about Fighter Pass 2, a lot of your past Smash experience does not apply to these characters, right? So it's like I'm, I feel like I'm relearning a whole nother new Smash Bros game when fighting against these specific characters. And I'm pretty sure other top players can relate to this too. It's just, it's just frustrating when your past Smash experience don't apply to some of these newer characters. And it almost feels like you're starting from ground zero again, right? It's still possible to beat them, obviously, but it's just, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of grinding. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, I think we say it a lot. Like, definitely big shout outs to all everyone who's still putting up the fight, right? And trying to learn. And even when you do learn and try to beat the top tier of any game, it still is it's so hard at a top level because you're playing against other players who are also very good. And they're using these characters that are hard to fight and all this other whatever, man. It's it's tough. So shout out to everyone still 
competing and taking ultimate seriously because I still think it's super dope. I enjoyed watching uh, the tournaments this weekend and there's a lot of great play, uh, a lot of great character representation, obviously too, uh, coming through the top eights. But I think the number one thing I, w- I want to start talking about, one of the most interesting things over the weekend that we teased a little bit is uh, Leo's Roy. And kind of, I was going to ask in the chat before we got started today, what y'all think, but I thought live reactions would be better. So I think, let's start with Marcus. What do you think about Leos Roy? Or did you catch, did you catch a lot of his games or? Good old Marcus? start with Marcus. Let's go. Um, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why don't you open it up, Marcus? Yeah, I'm down. How you feeling, Marcus? Uh, so I watched um, pretty much all of it, all of Diamond Dust. Uh, it was a great event. I don't know why it's kind of off topic, but I just felt the need to bring it up. I don't know why people were flaming that events production. Like that was just mad weird, man. It like, was the layouts. Layout. They, bro, they were rough. Like, Shiny Mark's name were... like ran off the title card. It yeah, was rough. Like, hey, man, not all the time you can get not, every like, single what, letter on the screen. That's bro. what I, on, it's bro. not even that. It's just like, I, yeah, like not every tournament has a Genesis budget. Like it just, I don't know. It was, I think there's a just, push and pull. I, I yeah, feel what you're yeah, saying, yeah. but I also think like it's okay to expect better. I like the. I like. I liked how organic it felt. I liked that it felt like people showed up to an event and they just were trying their hearts out. Sometimes I feel like when I'm watching events, it feels like more of a spectacle than like more about the actual tournament itself. So I don't know. I, I liked the Diamond Dust layout, but I could see why some people didn't. Do you, did but, you not? Is it more of like punching down feedback? Because I think feedback is justified no matter what. Yeah, I agree. Is it, does, did it just feel like for you, it felt like, Obviously, the production quality wasn't the greatest, and it felt like people were punching down. Because I think feedback is still necessary yeah. no matter the event. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think yeah. it might have. I, I think it was. Punching down. I think it was pretty obvious that like it wasn't the best layout or something like that. You know what I mean? But people but, still like, showed, which was cool. Yeah, exactly. Like I, it just felt like people were there more for the tournament than it being like such a big thing, like for like a name or something like that. Like showing up to a Smash Con or a Genesis, it was like. I didn't even know what Diamond Dust was, and everybody showed up, and I was like, "Oh snap! This joint lit! Like these yeah. people are here to play!" Like I don't know. Anyway, I was gonna say it, it's a little bit of both too, right? Because you got to start somewhere, so there's gonna be things yeah. that don't go perfectly at your first tournament, and that's an easy fix. And with that feedback, I guarantee you it'll be fixed next time for Diamond Dust Two or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, for sure, it, as it should, because this tournament was great. But go ahead, Marcus. Yeah. Um, but Leo's Roy. Uh... I thought it was interesting. Uh, the pacing at which he played was really strange for Roy. Um, there were a lot of breaks in in the way that he moved. It was a lot of pauses. He, sometimes he would just go to platform. I remember he was playing Beast Mode Paul once. I think it was Beast No, it wasn't Beast Mode. It was that Derp Dog, I'm pretty sure, the hero. And um, he just jumped on the platform all the way across the stage. And the hero got like every single buff. And I was just like, "What's going on here? Like, we like you just you just cool with that? Like, and then he, I think he just got cooked for that or something like that. So it was a lot of like weird pa- pacing breaks that I'm not used to from seeing Roy. Like normally it's with Roy pacing, it's like swing, swing, pause, or like swing, 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 pause, or something like that, you know. But his was more like he was playing like a like a Lucina almost. It, it was a little strange, like just something you would expect from Leo, I guess." And that's that's not to say that it was bad or anything. It was just really interesting. It was like different than what I'm used to seeing. Um, the one thing I did find really strange that I'm not sure that I particularly agree with, but it seemed to work out for him to some success, is his routing on Roy was really weird. Like he would have people toward the edge of the stage, and instead of like forward airing them off the stage, he would do like up air, and then he would back air them in to the middle of the stage, and like try to continue from like this angle right here where it's like kind of they're like still 45 above him and he would like look for up air or look for like falling air or try to catch their land or jab or something like that it was an interesting take um i'm i'm curious to see where it goes because it could end up working out in the long run and be like something that you know he sees as a vision with the character but a lot of the time, I was just like, "Bro, just forward air them off stage and just get the get the ledge trap, like yeah. jab them at jab them at forty on their neutral or something." F smash, let's get a dub. But sometimes uh, you need something new to reinvigorate a character. Like think like Light Fox, you know. And we're so used to seeing like 
Cole is Roy, essentially, and a few others like Goblin and Alice and all the, the Roys around the world. But um, so maybe that could work out for Leo. Uh, I thought it was solid, especially for it being the first event that he pulled it out. And I was glad to see how reluctant he was to switch off Roy. You know, he was just like, I'm, hey, if this is who I'm with, I got to put it through the test. Kind of like what Gavin normally says with like picking up new characters. So that's pretty much my thoughts on it. Uh, we'll have to see a lot more of it because you can't just like judge it off of one tournament, like drop Roy instantly. But I will, we'll see. We'll see. What you think, Gavin? You look like you're ready to speak. Ooh, like yeah. you're ready to yap. Oh. So. He used Roy at a uh, summit in, like, Squad Strike before, and it caught my eye, and I think, in a way, it's because it's kind of like what Marcus said, where there's, like, a layer of creativity, or, like, he would do things that were unexpected, regardless if it was, like, optimal or not. So I was impressed with it, and I thought it was interesting. Um, so it's kind of cool that he actually gave it a shot, Um in a like for real environment um and i think regardless if he like i i kind of like what marx is saying and i can agree with it but in a way i think it's like i'd rather see that happen because maybe that means there's extra room for growth that's unexpected or something um so I, i think there's a lot of potential with it like i don't know he took that game off riddles with the nair uh forward smash i was like that is that is the last way I expected him to take a game off of Riddles with Roy. Like, so I think I think there's something there, um, but I think the hardest part about it is, regardless if there's something there, we could probably say that about most characters he would select and try to tournament, we would see potential in them. So I, it's always a annoying situation to be in when you see potential in something, but you still have to figure out if it's worth it because it's not like that's the only place where you'll find potential. Um, And if we look a little bit more on paper, you have to truly ask yourself, like, uh, how beneficial is it to have Roy on the roster? Uh, But yeah, I I, I think his Roy is cool. I I, I like seeing the the new takes, like Marcus was saying. Like, regardless if it's, like, the right or wrong answer, I think um, it's pretty interesting. Um... But but then things like, you know, he goes up against Riddles Kazuya, which he's had, like, a, a few rough times with. And it's, like, even worse than normal. Like, that doesn't help, right? Like, with someone's confidence with playing a new character. But he has a good head on his shoulders, and I'm sure if he wants to keep using it, he's not going to let any of the losses or anything affect um, his, like, long-term game plan. But yeah, I didn't even know that... Was this a surprise to people, or did or did we know he was going to be trying this? Because I had no idea he was going to be trying it. I think he might have said something, right? He tweeted a picture of him hovering like Roy on the character select screen. Okay. So I think I think people had an idea that he may be trying it, um, but that's yeah, it. I think honestly, I think Riddles might be a part. Not like why he's picking up Roy, but why he's trying to do something fresh. I think they are... He's 0 for 4 in the last four times he's played against Riddles, from Collision to Ultimate Summit 6, Rise and Grind, and then Diamond Dust. And then the only time he beat him before that was the Scuff World Tour, where he did the Marth reverse... Stop it, Marcus. Stop. Because he did try Marth again. He did try it again, and it didn't work. It was later in the set. He didn't start Marth. Something. But anyway, so all good. I, I took a no when I was watching him play against Riddles. I... I hope he sticks with Roy and like kind of sees it through because like you said, Marcus, it was very different. It's not very much a Leo style character, aside from the fact that it's holding a sword, right? Yeah, holding that's a sword. As far as it goes, yeah. Exactly. But he's not no one's like, oh yeah, that's a sword character, Roy. Like te- technically, but it's like more like he's it's like brass knuckles or some shit. Like he's brawling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's not typically what you see from Leo, which is where you get that different twist on the character. Bro, at one point I saw him run up. Down tilt and then instant slingshot falling up air, like follow up. I was like, holy fuck. It missed and he got grabbed by Kazi and died. But I love. <laughs> I made fun like- of that situation live on stream. Did you I, really? I was restreaming this tournament and when he did the slingshot up air and got down throw, I was like, oh, nice slingshot, bro. And he just yeah, died. Dude, <laughs> yeah. well, I was like, but the vision was like, like there. You know what I'm saying? Literally zero percent. Instantly yeah, dude, died for okay. like approaching. Also, 
he'd be getting grabbed by Kazuya a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I think that's obviously like, it's easy to go back and say that's one of his problems in the matchup, but it is crazy that, so he, what was the sequence? It was, he went Roy and lost, then went Joker and lost. And then mm -hmm. he went Roy and took a game. Is that, that's the way it went, right? Yeah. He even did some things off stage with Joker that I thought like, he's clearly working. He obviously it's not a secret that riddles has been his demon for, I don't know, like a full year at this point, basically, if not longer. So I like that. He's trying new things, even if it's a different character that I think is a really risky, but I think Cola has a hard time against riddles as well. Like, I think that's just a really risky, you never want to be scrapping with Kazuya, which is what you have to do with Roy, yeah. but I'm glad he tried it and that he committed and that the vision is there in certain part in certain parts. But dude, like you said, it's a first time, at a tournament with a character that you're really committing, some things like that up air, they're going to whiff, but you got to just keep going. Like it, it didn't work out and that sucks. And against Kazuya, if you, if you mess up, you're probably dead. Like that's just how, especially Riddle's Kazuya. Bro, his, his conversion game was so weird. Did you guys catch some of the shit Bro. that Riddle's was doing? He's forward tilting. Dude, he did down throw back tilt. What the fuck? And then he got neutral air and then well, he a down smash. Right? Isn't, back tail, isn't back tail good in the situations where electric doesn't connect? Isn't that like the best thing? I just don't. Yeah, see I, a I, lot. I think that's what I think he had a ton of rage when that happened. So yeah. he did back tilt, and then I think it was short. Uh, for it's either neutral or forward air into down smash. Oh, the the falling the neutral air. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the weird thing. hit of neutral air, though. I think like far hit. I hate yeah. getting hit by that because in the moment you have no idea that you're about to get like Falcon there. <laughs> like, so like you're not feeling like you're in danger and then all of a sudden your stock gets deleted and you're probably already losing before that happens. So now you're guaranteed an L or something like it's happened to me once in bracket versus riddles where it was like a back and forth set. And as soon as that connected, the set was over. Like, so I hate that he has a confirm into that down smash because that joint is strong. Crazy dude. Talk about riddles for a second too, bro. He brought up the cloud. Y'all see that? I kind of liked it to be honest. I like that. I feel like the theme of uh, that tournament for some of these players was uh, having the confidence to to try something for like a long term success kind of thing. And I love to see it because it's not easy to do. It's not easy to like. I feel like once you get started, it's a little easier to have the confidence, but. Especially someone like Riddles, who's been like tried and true on like a specific way of playing Smash. I think having the confidence of doing that is really good. Because I'm gonna be brutally honest here. Like I, I've lost to Riddles and his uh, fighting game characters before, but I don't think those characters are long term good for like winning major tournaments. Because they have clear ways for every character to fight against them. Obviously, right? Because they, they're. Uh, they get they get camped for lack of a better word, and I think Riddle is having some flexibility against a character like Steve, which is like an extremely flexible character, uh, is 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 good growth and shows that he's thinking long term and stuff like that. And maybe now he'll maybe he'll use a bit of both in certain matchups or something like that, right? Um, so I, I think that's really good, uh, especially because Cloud's like one of the best picks for Steve, obviously. So. Yeah, see, like, this counterpick makes a lot more sense to me. Leo's, I'm not going to be really nice about Leo's Roy. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's worth, it doesn't make sense on paper, it doesn't make sense on his play style, and honestly, the only, my only question is, I don't know where Leo's at when it comes to, like, wanting to win. I know Gavin, I listened to the episode last week, and I know Gavin was just talking about, like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done the whole, like, pick the best characters, try to be the best player in the world thing, and now I'm just going to pick the characters that I want to win with. And I don't know if Leo's in that same boat. Because if Leo is just playing Roy because he likes the character and he wants to play Roy and try to win with Roy, like, that's cool. But right now, it's not even a proven meta character. Like, Cola's getting destroyed by so many of Fighter Pass 2, in my opinion, and to the point where he's thinking about playing Cloud against some of these fighter pass who are like just the currently strong meta, right? Like Steve particularly, like I, I don't know how good Roy does against Steve. And I just don't know if Leo's being stubborn because he's the one that started the corn trend. He was the one that started getting all these results with corn. Then two other players start winning with corn. And I don't know. I don't know if it's just like, well, no. other people are playing corn. So I don't want to do it because his corn is already proven. So there, there's, there's so much data out there that suggests 
that he plays other characters or even like what happened to the Rob. Like Rob is just way better than Roy. And I think we can all agree that Rob is better than Roy. So now the Rob's gone question mark. I, I just, I don't know how serious Leo is taking the game right now because a lot of the decisions right now don't make sense to win tournaments right now, or they don't make sense like matchup wise, or they, they're not matching with his play style. And I mean, if, if he doesn't really, if he just wants to play characters he want to, wants to play, then it's whatever, right? It's the same, it's my same criticism against Gavin. Gavin playing Sephiroth is like absolutely troll if you're trying to, win. <laughs> it, it just is. And, yeah. and, and I don't sugarcoat it. I, I don't care if you're a good friend of mine or uh, you're just a, you know, a competitor that I know within the scene or whatnot, right? I'm just going to tell you the truth in terms of what data that we have right now. Trying to win with Sephiroth is like, very funny like you're you're trying to you're you're trying to outplay your opponent so much that you win with a character that shouldn't be winning in re general you you have like brawl levels of lag you're the only character in the game that has that much lag you can't frame trap like you have to hard read so many times over and over again and you're only you have range but you don't have activity you don't have like active frames on your disjoints right so they don't frame trap you you have to be extremely precise and I think Roy, I, I don't think Roy's as bad as Sephiroth, but I just think Leo has so many other characters he's been successful with, and like he's just pulling out another character, and I don't understand why. And I don't even know if Roy does well against Kazuya. Like, Cola mm -hmm. kind of goes back and forth. I'm not too sure. I think Riddles has the set count on him, but like, you, you kind of just don't want to be near Kazuya. And I don't know if Roy has enough sour hit setups to justify like spacing out Kazuya and getting something out of it, right? So. That's to me, it doesn't make any is, uh, sense, but if he wants to do it, he wants to do it. Versus characters like Kazuya or like – it reminds me of when I play Diddy. Like let's say I'm playing Diddy versus Luigi. Like it's fine. I technically outrange Luigi, but it's not enough to feel like I do. You know what I mean? Like when you're playing Kazuya versus Roy or Steve versus Roy, you outrange them, but it's like do you – and even then, maybe he doesn't actually outrange Steve. Oh, dude, <laughs> Give us some um, costume moves, bro. That but basically, be you have the disjoints to deal with, like, the brawling, scrappy scenarios. But, like, do you actually? Uh, so that's always really scary. Like, when I'm playing Diddy versus, like, the Mario Brothers or something, like, or, like, Mass, like, I have a couple moves that are larger than their move set, but, like, uh, it still feels like I'm in their bubble and having a hard time like dealing with that. So it's, it's scary. I feel like playing Roy versus Kazuya, like has said, like you have the tools to maybe not grab, get grabbed too often, but you probably will. Like that's probably why you, you're going to lose if you do lose. And Our please, question. for the love of God, I watched this set and it was like tearing me apart. Leo, please switch your DI on electric. Like Leo would show, you can watch the blue line during the set. I would say like 80 to 90% of the time, Leo shows out. So like as the Kazuya player, you can see the blue line going out. And there's a lot of times where if you, there's situations where if you go out, you're not on the platform. If you go in, you're on the platform. So it's technically a 50-50, but he was not switching it. Like he just holds out. And then he just stays going out. So Riddles knows exactly where he's going. He knows he's not going on the platform. And there are technical 50-50s on electric in those specific situations. And you have to show them one way. It's like it's like SDIing against Bayo in Smash 4. You like SDI up and out, but on the last hit, you like change your DI down and in or something like that. Because the Bayo is reacting to you going up and out, right? So they're expecting up and out on the last final hit. You You have to switch that. Because if Riddles knows exactly where you're going after every electric, you will get zero to death dead, every yeah. single time. You will get obliterated. So, and this is for anyone that struggles against Kazuya, you you have to switch to DI on electric. And I know it's very hard to do it in the moment because you're fearing for your life because you're getting zero to death in tournament by Mr. Mishima. But <laughs> it, it, it you have to do that. You have to do that because if, if you're not even making the Kazuya coin flip for the kills, like... Come on, man. I think the you most already know all every Kazuya player is just like no lifing it in training mode. They're going to hit it. They're going to hit it. <laughs> I think the most important thing or like a, a nice way to get started with DI and Kazuya stuff is when you get electric, start spinning your stick, bro. Yeah. Just, you don't even know That's which way you're going. Just, just, like, just, 
Just spin it. Mario Party. I just like wiggle like back and forth. I'm like, whatever, bro. Like you got chance it. time. Chance time. Like like Yugi versus Pegasus, bro. You don't even know your own spell cards that are set down. Yeah, gotta hit him. Loki, that's the tech on certain <laughs> deck pieces too. You don't even know which way you're like. Yeah, it, it can't read you if you don't know. Yeah, you you don't even know, bro. I do it all the time versus Kazu, where I'm just like, Fuck I'm it. too old for this. Spin, spin to win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I Dude, love the chat. Can, I, so can I ask? And this could be obviously bleeding into our Patreon content a little bit, and also maybe a little into like similar shades of Gavin. But where's the Leo Cloud at, bro? Like what? Like Cloud, obviously, in terms of this meta and what we're looking at here, bro. Where is and, and, and Cloud? And, right. That I know, Charles. It's, it's kind of like <laughs> we found Riddles. Question. Riddles got the Cloud. Hey, he's down. Riddles, he's on the way. Hey. Well, here's Marks and I talked about this a little bit. We're gonna be. I'm gonna be a little brutally honest. Riddle's Cloud versus Onan was Cloud versus Onan. That it did not have a Riddle's flair to it or anything. The Cloud was relatively weak, but it was getting the job done in like a game or something in the matchup. The Cloud was not very precise. The it, it, like there's a lot of like you got to start somewhere. Like exactly, but I'm saying like it's like the Roy. It's just. No, it, it's different. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. But... Hit it, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus might explain this better. Right. I'm not trying to sound too rude, obviously. Let Riddle's one of the me... best players in the world, but the cloud is not. The cloud is not. As like... a longtime Smash enjoyer, okay, and if you've been a fan of the podcast for a long time, there's a term that one likes to use about characters when they pick it up, okay? Does it have the it factor, right? Yeah. When, factor, come on. <laughs> when you pick up a character, a lot of times, if it's a secondary, you're instilling your personal play style that speaks volumes about how you see the game into that character. When I watched Riddles pick Cloud, it looked like Riddles picked Cloud because he knows that these options are strong against Steve and I'm going to use them. It did yes. not feel like the crazy riddles movement. Yes. The convert, like, you know, his execution is on scene. Like the crazy riddles actually has like ridiculous reaction time. Like he was like preempting everything. I was like, bro, what is going on here? Like, this is not riddles. Yeah. Could it become riddles? Yeah, sure. I think Definitely. he, he had an idea and I was watching his stream. He was, playing in Smash 4, and he picked Cloud. And he played it against Wrath. Um, and he was playing it on Elite for a little bit, and he said, maybe I should try picking up Cloud and Alt. So this Cloud is fresh, fresh. Like, it's right. new, new, new. Like, probably less than five hours on it. And still was able to take games off Onin. Like, I, I yeah. think this Cloud pick is better long-term-wise than him trying to figure it out with the a hundred percent i not even agree close. but i'm saying for leo and me our cloud clouds do not have the it factor yeah but it just takes time like you you just have to imprint no, dude, it's natural bro this is a, I, 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 I can't control. i can't argue because i'm not tweak or leo but it's you, you guys can pick way better characters versus like you guys can pick better matchups but i just know that you guys don't give a fuck about the game like that anymore like i, think... I just know for a fact it, it just shows in your character decisions it, ju it just shows because if you're if you're pay playing for your life and you have to prepare for an ultimate tournament in like one or two years is your ego more important than your life where you take a character that's worth <laughs> Dude, he trucked. yeah exactly because in smash 4 your ass is playing cloud and fucking bayo so I know you guys don't like, give a fuck about like the game like that anymore. Though. And there's nothing wrong with that. You guys are just older. The drive's not there. I get it. The game's like six years old. But I don't want to sit here and pretend like we're we're talking about these players in an aspect of them. They are trying their very best to win, and they are fighting for their lives. Even someone like Void. Does Void give a fuck about winning in Smash anymore? God, no. I mean, you, you two give more fucks than Void because you guys are actually competing. You guys still get top eights and stuff like that. But, like, I've seen a lot of players – in the point of their life, while well, when they're making decisions, and every single decision is just to win. It's not to like play the edgy sword character. It's not to like play this cool guy that has a badass like backstory or it's part of my favorite fucking game. I've seen <laughs> players when they play and they just want to win. 
And then I've seen the other side of it. The, so it is the what funniest is. part about that is that Cloud could easily fit that for Gavin too, which is hilarious. You love you love F seven, bro. Yeah. You if you want to play several that bad, Cloud is right there and he's a better pick. He's not fun. No, this is not about fun. I think this is to Charles's correct. Point, this is not about fun. Correct. It is not. There, but, there's a lot of characters in I think Smash it could that are not fun, fun and that are very powerful and you can win with. But I, I also well, think. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, I think that's true. I also think there needs to be some degree of enjoyment while you're playing the game. You can't just like lock in a character you don't enjoy at all and expect to continue to win because you're not going to want to develop the character. But I think if you're picking the character for like two matchups, like 99% of the time you're playing, you'll be enjoying the game. So that's fine. Unless the character is like ridiculously irrelevant. Like there's a 10 million Steve Rob snakes, you know what I mean? But otherwise, like most people aren't just going to play a character like 99.9% of players aren't just going to play a character because they're giga broken. Except for like, I can only think of two. It, has to, it just depends on their drive. I think bro. it depends. No, yeah, I know. I, I, th I think it's a mix because in Smash 4, Gavin played Cloud and Bayo because he enjoyed playing as them as well as them being fucking broken, which ties into each other, right? Yeah, yeah so wrong, some Gavin, motherfuckers got lucky. You're not uh, lucky yes, anymore. That, that, so Charles, now you got to make a tough choice. Charles, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I got so lucky, bro. You got yes, that's lucky, what I'm bro. saying. If, if Bowser Jr. was a top tier, that would have been your character. Especially, I didn't even know Cloud was good. I was just trying the new character at the time, bro. And it's yeah. the same thing with all these players that love playing Steve in Smash. They're, I'm going to be honest. The younger generation or whatever, they love Steve. They love how he plays in Smash. They love how broken he is. They're just lucky. I they still think I have, a bit of, I still have, have a bit of that balance in my decision making, I think. I, think, I so. think that there's still, a, even if it's the smallest crumb of hope, especially for Sephiroth, I still think there's a universe where, like, I can win with Sephiroth. And I'm, I was going to say for Diddy 2, but we're living in it. Like, I literally, I literally do win majors with Diddy Kong. So I think those, I think it's possible and I think I can do it. But especially for Sephiroth, it's very difficult, and I still feel like I'm at square one. But I, I've i played Smash enough to know like when I'm playing in the match if something is there, and I I still feel it sometimes. So, uh, like, But for Diddy Kong, I can just win, like, straight up. It doesn't matter the match. Like, even if it, I know I've been getting smoked by Steve, like, I know there's going to be a day where I beat Steve with Diddy, and I'm not going to be surprised. Like, it is, like... I know I'm making it harder, and I know in like that I could fix this balance, or at least adjust the balance to where it makes more sense to go to to a tournament right now and win. But like, I have faith in my ability right now with those two characters, and I have faith that it will improve and I will figure it out. Like, dude, it put me in a bracket right now, and I'll go solo Diddy. I will probably win a bunch of hard matchups. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not saying it's not possible. That's just my outlook on it. I, yeah. I no, personally, right. I, I, like I said, I am not you and I'm not Leo, but I guarantee you, you guys had more drive in the first one or two years of the game. You guys had more drive in Smash 4. I just, I, that's how I feel when I look at your guys' character picks because yeah. at the end of the day, there's two categories, right? There's the will to win and then there's like having fun. And at the end of the day, which one takes precedent over the other? Some people are lucky. Some people get to do both, right? Because yeah. they overlap with each other. But other people have to make decisions. And I, I especially think about this when I think about like old school Brawl or Smash 4 players where they just like picked Diddy Kong, they played neutral, and they won. They played Sheik, they played neutral, and they won. There, there was zero it factor, and it was still enough to win. Because they were fundamentally that good, and they abused the most broken characters in the game. And that was a very common thing. And Bro. now I think in Ultimate... We don't see it as much because there's so many viable options. Yes. So yes. you guys are actually lucky because it's like instead of picking like from these – I mean, I guess you guys are still picking high-ish tier characters. I would kind of argue Sephiroth's maybe a bit lower, like lower end of high tier. Like Roy is still pretty solid. But there, there's still like so many other characters in my opinion that are better than Roy, right? And, it's funny. And Sephiroth. We talked about that this. You would, that you would for sure enjoy. There's so many characters, man. 
we we talked about this a bit last week where there's a balance between if you, like Marcus said if you don't enjoy your character and you don't like them if you do enjoy your character on the other side the positive is is that it motivates you to get better because you enjoy your character you enjoy the way that they play that you enjoy x y and z about them so there's more natural motivation to play the game and to get better and to get stronger with them which i think is a huge x factor for you gavin right yeah so that exists and then I think there is another push and pull to it too, Charles, where, bro, I didn't know who the fuck Meta Knight was before Brawl came out. Guess what? I love that guy now. Like, <laughs> you know what? I started mashing up air and neutral air with him. I was like, this guy rules. Like, this is my guy right here. But sometimes, like, I'll pick a top tier and I'm like, this isn't for me. Like, I, I don't like this. And it, it, it kind of all factors into all those different things where people are making decisions and stuff. I do agree where if you... Obviously, if we talk about on paper all the time, like we need to like put on a shirt or some shit. But like on paper, obviously the best thing you could do if you only want to win, like if you're a robot that's like winning is good, losing is bad, and that's all I care about. Picking Steve, you know, picking Steve, picking Mayo, picking uh, Meta Knight, whatever. Like that's what you got to do, and then just become the best with them. But there are some certain X factors with playing characters that aren't quite as common as top tiers too. Like there's there's so much that goes into it. I think it's really yeah. interesting, especially in a landscape like Ultimate, where like you said, Charles, there are like fucking 40 or 50 characters winning pretty regional sized tournaments you know what i'm saying and and i just want to clear things up i am talking about someone who's whose job is to win i'm not talking about like you go to your local tournament you have your nine to five and you like the game and you just like want to get on your local pr my perspective i'm talking about are professional players whose like job is to get high placements for their orgs or whatever. And, and every org has different setups, right? I don't know what priorities each org has in terms of like winning or content creation and stuff like that. The landscape has changed quite a bit since like Smash 4 when we started seeing the teams. But like generally you would think a pro player's main objective is to win tournaments. So that is the perspective I'm thinking of. And I'll tell you right now in life, most of the time when you go do your job, you're probably gonna have to do some shit you don't like to do. And that's just me being realistic and having to go through multiple jobs that I don't like, but I tough it out and I do it. So it, that's couldn't, the perspective I'm coming from. So yeah. metaphorically, couldn't that be you working through hard matchups? Like, I don't want to fucking play against Steve as this character, but I'm going to do it. Cause that's like the hard but thing. You also, I have to do. It, as long as you truly believe it. And I mean, well, if, if Gavin truly believes it, I think he has more like smash IQ and more smash experience than I do. I study the game a lot and I can give my perspectives, but I've never been in the hot seat like that. And if he truly believes it, then I can't knock him. But I will say that there's other options that are better, but if he truly thinks it's possible and he thinks that his placings can still stay to a point where he can still stay on an org and still, because you don't want to fall off the face of planet Earth, right? Like, say, let's say Gavin's just like, all right, fuck it. I'm going solo Sephiroth and I can do it. I'm I'm tweak. I got this right. Thirty third, fifty fifth. Like doesn't make it out of pools. Then no sponsor. Then can't pay though. bills. Right. I'm not saying that this would happen. I'm just saying like in you need to also think about your well being and you being able to pay the bills. And for Gavin, a part of that is his placements in tournaments. Right. So I don't think Gavin's going to make a decision. I think the Sephiroth is an in between choice. He knows that he can play other characters and it's better, dude. Diddy Game & Watch is one of the most broken combination of characters because Diddy perfectly, perfectly covers Diddy's bad matchups. Every character that pressures shield super hard and can't let Diddy move and like are really fast and they get up in Diddy's face so he can't set up banana, Game & Watch Omega counters that, has a reflector, zoners are fucked. Like, it's, it's all right there. Or you could even go Cloud. Diddy Cloud, also on paper, very good. He's picking Sephiroth, but he knows, he knows, that his results won't dip as much. He will still stay relevant. He can still have a sponsor. And he gets he, he's finding like this perfect middle ground, and he still believes in the fact that eventually, with Sephiroth, he can win. But his results I, won't fall off the face of planet Earth, and he can still survive. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, At the end of the day, like, I mean, everyone in this, in this call right now knows, like, I look at the game my way, and, like, I kind of refuse any other view. Like... I look at the game like a lot differently than like a typical tier list or something a lot of the time. Like I'll I'll bend to the community once in a while and be like, okay, this is I like this is good right now or something like that. But like like 
when I think I don't think Kazuya is that good. Like as a as as annoying, like losing to it, I understand why it's super stupid and all that it's stuff. Frustrating, it, but it's not broken. In a way, it's super broken, but in in another way, it's like not that impressive. Like it's so. I'm like that all the time with this game. Like, I still don't think Game & Watch is, like, the end-all, be-all of Ultimate. I still don't think Rob is the end-all, be-all of Ultimate. Like, I'll bend to the community once in a while and be like, okay. But I'm not picking it because when I play it, it doesn't feel like I'm picking the best possible choice. Like, stuff like that. Like, there's a couple that I don't have an excuse for not playing. Like, there's a couple. Like, Sonic and Sheik, I don't have much of an excuse. Like, that those characters are really fucked up, like really fucked up. But like, to, like I, I see the game in a way where like, if I play Steve, like, like I, I as broken as Steve is, like, I know that like, I'm not, I'm not the greatest at it. And there's like, there's like, I, I just have faith that there will be a point where that character just doesn't phase me anymore. And I also have faith that if I was the one in that seat as Steve, that there would come a point where they wouldn't be phased by my Steve anymore. You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't it, think you play Steve. I, I I think there's other combination of characters for exactly what you particularly that. want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, when I look at the game through my Diddy and Sephiroth lens, like, especially Diddy, I see a lens where even if they know everything in my brain, like everything, my game plans, my win conditions, what I'm going to do. I have faith that I will still beat that player with Diddy. But if I'm playing some of my other characters in the past, like if I'm playing PT and I'm playing against someone that I've played a hundred times, we've gone back and forth. They know everything I want to do. I don't have faith that I would be able to win if they just simply had enough knowledge. But with, with characters like Diddy and hopefully Sephiroth, if my opponent, even if they're like the the most dangerous p- opponent yet, when it comes to experience and like character picks, I have faith that I will still win regardless, especially with Diddy. So that's how I feel about it. Like when I play Cloud, it just feels kind of ugly. Like it feels like there's 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 universes and matchups and all and all this stuff that will happen where it won't be up to me to win. I just it's just what I feel like it happens all the time and and sometimes there's these really good moments with Sephiroth where it feels like it was up to me and that was my influence on the match and especially with Diddy like it feels like when I lose like it was it was on me at least to an extent where I can keep playing Diddy and when I win it it wasn't because they like messed up. A lot of the time when I'm playing other characters, it feels like I'm relying on my opponent. And if I have to rely on my opponent in any way, like I'm done. The second I feel, even if I'm wrong, the second I feel like my opponent has to decide what's going on in Smash, I'm done with that character. Like Wario, there were so many situations where it felt like it was up to my opponent. And I don't want anything to be up to my opponent. Um, so there is a couple match matchups with my combination where it feels like it's up to my opponent, namely like Sonic. Uh, and I'm that's where I get the most tilted and, and struggle the most in my head because it feels like I can't influence them in any way. It feels like the only way I can win is if they mess make a bunch of mistakes. So, but I have faith that my combination is good enough because I don't have that huge mental struggle with with that many characters so i also think that there's a a uniqueness to players because i think part of it is winning right like if if this is a you being a professional part of it is winning winning is very important but i also think that there are players whose personality pushes them over the edge the uniqueness of the characters that they play makes people want to support them more. Like, think about if Gavin never picked up Diddy Kong, who nobody believed in at the time. You know, just, I don't think you should play Diddy Kong. He's not good enough. Now look where we are with Diddy Kong. I, I just think there are some clear answers. Like, bro, please don't be trying to, like, win with Little Mac or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, characters yeah. are, like, extremely obvious weaknesses and that are very, very flawed. 
But I, I do think there's something to say about people who stick to the characters that they believe in as long as they're proven that they're good enough. Because Light could have dropped Fox a long time ago. Gluto could have dropped Wario a long time ago because there's just some matchups that are unplayable. They're, they're just, why would we even play them? But they kind of stuck with them. Or people picked up characters like Gavin who just saw something. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Leo really does see something with Roy. Maybe he Bro. does. I mean, it's hard to know. Sometimes, like, feel free to to chime in at any point. Because I, I, I haven't really worded this before. I don't know if this is like an imposter syndrome type of thing. But a lot of the times, I truly believe... I won't even have half the success unless I'm able to play the game through my like weird lens. Like if I can't, like I can't like, I feel like in smash four, it was easier to force my lens on any character I selected, but in ultimate, I can't just like, like, I feel like the community a lot of times says like, Oh, if tweak plays this character, like instantaneously, the whole universe is different. I actually don't believe in that anymore at all. Like, I don't, like, I don't think if, if I'm not playing Diddy, I don't think I'm the same person or player. So, like, it, like, we were talking about how I was lucky in Smash 4. I still think I'm lucky in this game. Like, I truly believe I am not, like, like, I think I'm good at specific things. Or, like, I'm good at looking at the game in a specific way. Like, I truly don't think it translates as well as it used to. Like... Like, I still think I'm just kind of lucky. <laughs> honest, honest question, or, or maybe it's not even something you've thought of, but how possible or how difficult is it to expand the lens? Like, right now you're like, I need to play the game through my way or through the lens that I look through. My so lens like is, kind of pretty, a- is pretty wide, but, like, it's not even about, like, I need like I need a certain character for this lens to work. It's like, no. like... There's, like, some stubbornness to it, and there's but there's also, like, I just genuinely don't think... I'm as good as people think. Uh, I think sometimes I'm a little gimmicky, but uh, I can kind layer, of that. But there's I, a lot of layers to my gimmicks. There is. I can kind of see that, and sometimes, and I like Chuck. I'm gonna be pretty short, but um, sometimes you're you're a little stubborn. I can yeah. see that. I think the a lot of the like the I can't even say like better players because there aren't. It's hard to argue that there are many players better than you. Um, obviously, if we look at like results and rankings, there are. But anyway, like the slightly better players or whatever, they're willing to change the way that they see something. And it's not even that because you do that as well. So I, I don't know. I do think that there are some clear things you need. Um, you need a way to take stocks. I, I think that yes. <laughs> over over the years... Yes. I've I've noticed that you've gravitated more toward characters that have a clear way of taking stocks. Yeah. Cloud and Smash 4, if you put them on the ledge at a certain percent and you had limit, that was usually how you took your stocks. And then you played Bayonetta, obviously, and then Wario in this game. Dash BT attack, down tilt, dash attack, BT edge guarding, Diddy Kong Banana, um, C Drop Dare, all that thing. So I do think that there is um a need for your character to have like with Sephiroth very very very, yeah yeah but that's the that's the thing that's interesting to me with with Sephiroth is that I don't necessarily see that in him that there's just like a base way for you to take stocks it's normally with him like stray hits or you got some really crazy situation with wing off stage or something like that um so that's what's interesting to me but yeah I, I do think that there's always room for growth in players. And I think that if you decide that you really want to stick with Sephiroth, you'll maybe this will be the time where you expand your lens a little bit more and yeah, find like, different ways to take stocks and stuff like that. But this, this reminds me of my first ever like in-depth conversation with Tony. So Tony does a lot of stuff with smash university and all that. He's like a very knowledgeable person on smash. Um, we sat down like before a CEO top eight and it was like an hour or two actually. Like I, I was very interested. So I, I just talked with him the whole time and he was saying like, yeah, like I, I tell players like blah, 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 X and Y thing to like beat you. And he didn't know exactly why it was working, but he knew it was working. 
And then I kind of explained to him like the way I view the game and how like I only do things that I think are like visually pleasing or like look mm-hmm. nice because if it doesn't look nice to me, it feels like I'm doing something wrong. Um, and that's like the one standard I've always had that I've never gotten rid of. Uh, like I only do th- do options that I think visually look nice and can flow into everything else. Like a lot of the time it's logical, but at, sometimes it's it's just genuinely being stubborn. Like Charles knows that a lot too. Um, so that's definitely part of the lens. So like, I don't know, some characters just don't look as nice to me personally. So yeah, my, my, my last thing on this is my lens of Leo and tweak. And I think this is why he gets the most criticism on it or those two players specifically get the most criticism on it is during Smash 4, especially, and then even now, like, I mean, mainly early pre-quarantine, but even after quarantine, these two players still have very relevant results with a very wide character pool. So I think the general consensus of the community is that you guys have the best Smash IQ when it comes to picking up other characters, having instant results with them. You want a gommel in year one of, like, playing Roy for a week or however long you did it. Like, the 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 talent that you players have or the smash insight that you guys have to pick up new characters and know what's strong about said character and execute it. I think that's where the community has a very high standard on. And maybe you guys aren't like that anymore. I mean, I, I like, and not to be mean or anything, but the, the game is very different now, right? Yeah. Uh, it's been- Fighter pass two has brought a bunch of other different ways to play smash that your traditional smash skills or as we like to call them fundamental skills that you learn from previous smash games might not apply to some of these characters. So you like you and Leo might not even be able to transfer as easily as before. So that, that's kind of where I felt like this conversation is going. And I'm not trying to like throw shots out or whatever, but the game's very different. Ultimate is very different, especially in fire. It's been tough for me to accept that I can't just like do whatever I want, but because in Smash 4, you could do that. I remember yeah, I, I played a lot of Smash 4 with you, and you would, like, pick up Lucas, and in, like, an hour, it's, I'm like, this is the best Lucas I've ever played. Like, other people <laughs> in the tournament that played Lucas are, like, not as good as you. And, like, I'm, this is after watching you play it for 30 minutes to an hour. But maybe, I mean, ultimately, it's, it's a lot play, yeah. more of a deeper game. So, and I think I actually think Smash 4 was an easier game to play because it was just slower pace and stuff like that. So the game must might be really hard for you and Leo to just, like, copy yeah. Go for the copy paste strategy. I, mean, I did the same thing with Marcus all the time. I'd play, we'd play all the time. I just picked up DK and then went to a tournament and used DK, like all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it was hard to accept how different, how different Ultimate is, how different I am. But I've learned to love being a specialist more than being like I can play any character. The generalist, yeah. Like I love just playing Diddy Kong. I'm I'm down for that. It could have been a lame character, you know. Like I'm, I'm glad that it's the coolest character in the game. You know what I mean? Uh, no bias, no bias. Uh, so I, it was a, it was a tough thing to accept, and it kind of reminds me of my whole process of accepting that I don't play this game for fun anymore. I I it was tough to realize that this game is like a hundred percent a job now, but. I eventually just learned to love that aspect of it too. So it's, it's just how like life changes, like all that stuff. Like I kind of love that. I treat smash. Like it's my office job and it's like, it's that's, what it, in, baby. that's what like I, so I, pick, I pick Diddy. I play neutral and I, and I clock in like, like that's a suit and tie on Mo. put like, on the tie. It's not it, DK, it's but... tournament. Like I'm not here at this tournament for fun. I'm not. Yeah. It, it's, it should I, be fun. Fun loses, bro. I haven't been in a long time and it's not even a, like it doesn't even feel like it's about winning or losing oh what the heck sorry missing uh, no missing no yes dude yes <laughs> right there. so it's it's always tough for a little bit but you just learn to 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 love it i guess or you kind of have to learn to love it i like that it's a job and i like that i'm more of like a specialist with my specific characters and um i still think i bring a lot to the table when it comes to smash ultimate and its player base so there you go all uh, right really great topic. Want a tournament fundamentals right yes <laughs> uh maybe that well, should be another patreon topic what is fundies yeah 
What is Maybe. funny? Someone a- tried to answer that recently on Twitter. It's pretty good. Yeah, we, we can see a lot next next week. Um, shout out to good tournament in Connecticut. My backyard. Well, not really my backyard. Come on now, it's like five hours for me. But shout out to Light winning a tournament. Hell yeah! Dropped a set to Jude Jackal. Yeah, Grands three zero three zero. So Jackal had a lot of good wins at CT GamerCon, including Zamba. Yeah, tried to drop the book on him. That was fucking hilarious. I have to say, I am <laughs> one of Zamba's antics every tournament at this point. He is very funny. It's very fucking funny. Um, <laughs> He's very funny. Yeah, good tournament, and then obviously Shiny Mark. Like I, I know, obviously we're wrapping up the episode here, but what a tournament! Really well played. A lot of great W's for Shiny Mark along the way, especially Shattuck. I feel like Shattuck's one of the best players. On the planet, I was gonna say in the country, but on the planet right now. So Especially the last couple of months, specifically. Yeah. Yes. Bro, did you see when he played? Sorry, one thing when he played against Nao, the way he moved around the platforms, like when he panned, he slid, and then he did the B reverse. Yes, dude. That I was like, my ass is never playing him on. on he tried to add that flare against Shiny Mark, and he it just wasn't working. Yeah. But I uh, I appreciated that he was trying to feel loose versus Pikachu. Uh, I talked about that a lot in the restream, but yeah. Uh, Played really well versus Neo, like really like was able to lock in the ditto uh, compared to Genesis, where it's like very back and forth. It was pretty dominant. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Once again, Jackal did great. Took it, taking a set off Zomba is tough. That's a Rob Wolf is really tough, and Zomba and usually has, has the the lock on that head to head matchup and everything. But Zomba, uh, light is usually, or sorry, light. Uh... Light Jackal is usually pretty even, actually, right? It's always been really back and forth, and yeah, I feel yeah, like that's okay. a that's a bit of a hidden thing that, I mean, most people probably are aware, but yeah, they they've traded sets all the time. Um, talking about light, great. Shout- oh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, my region's just always struggled with light. Like he like because we don't play Fox, especially like that, and then like, uh, like like obviously people play Fox like really well, of course, like everywhere, but. Uh, it just feels like light just bullies my region for a long time now. So it's cool that we have, like, we're, we're, we have people beating him once in a while. So yeah, I was gonna say I know I know Jude hates Fox, and I know I hate Fox, and I know Rivers hates Fox. Like all of <laughs> us, hate Fox. State hates Fox. Yeah, yeah we hate bullshit, Fox. bro. Yeah, but uh, shout out to Light for winning W, and shout out to Cosmos for having a clutch set against uh, DeBuzz. Big bro. Forgot. Cosmos been on the up and up. That was a really, really fun game five to watch. Is what I'll say about that. So yeah, and gotta get got Cosmos layers. again. All right, you know what we have to do? Time. We have to talk about which characters top players would play on the Patreon. That's so, true. We're gonna go over the Patreon. I did, did it, Gavin. I'm so mad. Okay, well, I'll save this for next episode. But I had a whole like shiny mark slash Pikachu rant planned, but then we got super deep into yeah I know, no. topics. It was unexpected, but hopefully people will enjoy that. So thank you so much for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Support the Patreon. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Congrats, Shiny Mark. Congrats, Shiny Mark. Yes. W.